Hey guys, we are back with some more Wolfsburg Wolves franchise mode. And in this one, as you can see, we are in a preseason game against the St. Louis Blues, which we are playing. And this is a very special game. Not only because it is the last preseason for this GM mode, at least in terms of there being 10 years of simulating to do. And it is also special because we have a certain Mr. Alvin Hensick in the preseason lineup on the fourth line. So, uh, continuing the legacy of, uh, of the Hensick name on this channel. Now, he won't be in the regular season lineup, obviously. So, that's why we're getting him into the, uh, the preseason lineup. So that we can see him in a Wolfsburg jersey for uh, at least for one time here. And a nice shot by Jones. And a redirection by Zanetti in front. And Tucker... With the puck for St. Louis. And Homer. And Ajo. And Albrecht. Al Matthias Albrecht who is also in the lineup. As he is German. <laughs> Wanted to get him a game. He has scored in the simulation. So we're going to try to get some more here against the St. Louis Blues. Zanetti. Oh. Cam Weiss. New acquisition from free agency. To Zanetti. What a one-timer goal right in front for Aaron Zanetti. On a feed from Cam Weiss. The newest acquisition for Wolfsburg. Very nice. As the entire group gets pushed back by the St. Louis goaltender. <laughs> Jeez. And the worst hunt is celebrating like we just won the Stanley Cup or something. Zanetti with his second goal of the preseason. And he got a nice, uh, nice pass from Weiss. And that is a 4-1 lead. And now Goddard. Albrecht. And Alvin Hensick, number 90, are now out there. So continuing not only the Hensick legacy, but the uh, <laughs> the legacy of, of Hensick's wearing number 90 on this channel. And of course, the St. Louis Blues score right there. But uh, we're going to keep the fourth line out there because we barely got to see any of Albrecht and Hensick in the offensive zone. And I want to see what they can do. And obviously, we're not going to really get to see much of them, especially not Hensick. In the regular season, we might see a little bit of Albrecht because he is the 13th forward this year. So uh, we'll put him in there if he is, if there is any injuries, and I'm hoping there's not. But would be nice to see him get in there for a bit. Hansik with a shot, O'Reilly to Volpati, Bohinski defending there, <laughs> and Volpati skates back, but Goddard I believe will trip him up as St. Louis goes to the power play. And uh, yeah, number 15, I believe that is Goddard going to the box, the rookie. Well, I mean, <laughs> this entire line is full of rookies, so yeah, Garrett Goddard, two for tripping. And we're going to have to kill one off here. Homer and Weiss on the faceoff. Weiss wins it back to Lindholm. Lindholm clears, slaps it down, and Dunn will get there. Up for Roach. Roach. Circles back for O'Reilly in front. And he couldn't bang it home. Weiss will take it up. And he speeds by the St. Louis defense. Oh, he tried to go short side on that one. But Dunn is able to get it back. Roach. Had a three on one there. And he chose not to pass. Might have killed his, uh, his chances at getting this to a one goal game here. As Homer deflects that. Into the neutral zone. And Homer has a two-on-one. Weiss. Oh, what a save by Van Ryan. And he is going to throw that out. I'm not sure what the whistle was. Uh, did, did he just uh, did he throw it out too late? Probably. Because I'm not sure if I saw anything else that would have caused a whistle there. Weiss with the short side shot. And, uh, yeah, we, we're going to have a face-off here. Marin Albrecht on the face-off. So, normally that's going to be... Uh, uh, Vincent Trocek on the faceoff, but obviously I took Trocek out for Albrecht, and I took out, uh, what's his name, Frederick Stahlberg for Alvin Hansik. So here we go, Wallman to, uh, I don't know who that was, but that was a good shot by the St. Louis player, and uh, a, an even better save by Kali Rodin. Solviov <laughs> to Wallman, Wallman into the zone, he takes the shot, whiffs on it with a stick in front, as Mayer Pick that up, and down the ice. Let's uh, keep the second line penalty kill out there. Kulishov's beating the head with the wheels, and he will get that to Albrecht. 
Over to, oh, try to get, take away Master Top Mayor, but intercepted by a St. Louis player. As he centers up for Nolan. Oh my goodness, what a shot. And we have Goddard out of the box. Palmer, 8.20 remaining in the third. Finds Goddard, the rookie. Oh, oh my goodness, that almost went in, but Goddard stumbles into the net. And we're going to have a face-off to the side of the St. Louis goaltender. Point, Miller, and Gurianov out there. There you go, point. Back to the point for Staples. What a shot by Carl Staples. Couldn't bang it home, though. Point, down low. And gets it to the point for Staples. Provrov. Yes, I'm going to make that pun every time. And pokes it down low for Gurianov. Does Provrov. Provrov, back to his fellow countryman. For point, for Staples. For Miller. For, oh, trying to find Ajo, but nice intercept by the St. Louis defenseman. And we are going to have a power play for the Wolfsburg Wolves. Rintoul goes to the box. And Mayor, Ajo, and Point out there with Kuleshov and Bohinski. Face off, won by St. Louis Serena to Quenville. Is that John Quenville? <laughs> She's uh, Bohinski. We'll chase that down. And gets it up for Point. Point. Goes to the center of the ice. And over for Ajo. Tried to find Ajo, but could not. Flung around by the St. Louis defense. Met by Bohinski. Bohinski finds Point. Point. Oh, with the backhand shot, but could not bang it at home. A cool shot. You got to be on the boards there, bud. <laughs> All right. So at least uh, that didn't cost us much, and at least it's only a preseason game, but you really don't like to see that. Kuleshov stops, finds Bohinski, uh, to Mayer, to Bohinski, down low, someone be there, thank you Ajo, Ajo, in front, Mayer, oh, he tried to bang it home, but could not, Mayer, looking at his options, and, uh, oh, he gets stick lifted, nice stick lift by the St. Louis defense, but that is going to be a penalty on St. Louis, we're going to a five on three, as Serena goes to the box, I believe for a slash, yeah, that's got to be a slash. That's usually what those high-sticking calls are, yeah. Slashing, she's... Or uh, not high-sticking, um... What is it? Stick-lifting. Weiss out there on the face-off. And he technically wins it. Back to Jones. Homer. Looking at his options. Back to the point for Jones. Jones with a little spinorama for Lindholm. Down low to Homer. To Niederberger with the shot. Oh my goodness, he hit the net, but... Could not uh, get it in the net as Van Ryan will cover up. Weiss, Niederberger, Homer still out there with Lindholm and Jones. Weiss can't win it. Zolyabyov, <laughs> or Zolyabyov, I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Butchering these names like crazy as Jones circles up over. And oh, try to find Niederberger, but intercepted by a St. Louis player as Zaisev for St. Louis. We'll take it on the 5-on-3. Come on, boys. 5-on-3. Don't let them have too much possession here. There you go. Jones. Takes it in. And circling back. No, nope, I don't like what I see. Back to Weiss. To Jones down low. For Homer. Oh, my goodness. I was aiming for Niederberg, but I guess it's it's good that I found Homer instead. And, oh, Homer. I was aiming for Weiss there. The, the passes keep reaching where I don't want them to, but uh, I guess it... it it worked out the first time, but not that time for sure. Wallman has it on the point. Rintoul poked away by Jones. And that'll force St. Louis to re uh, regroup there as they'll dump it in. Lindholm takes it in through the neutral zone. Drop pass for Niederberger. Niederberger back to Lindholm for oh, trying to find Homer there at the back door. Could not, though. Weiss down low for Lindholm for Niederberger. Niederberger, oh, come on, trying to go 5-0, but a nice save by the St. Louis goaltender as takeaway master, or not the takeaway master, but a, a takeaway artist in Cam Weiss uh, tries to poke that away, and Lindholm gets it up through the neutral zone once again. Lindholm circles back, gets it down low. Oh, oh come on, Homer, you gotta be on the boards. Homer, oh, Van Ryan makes the save. With 54.5 seconds remaining in the third. Let's get the fourth line out there again. So that we can see Albrecht and Hensick one more time. Albrecht on the face off. 
And he technically wins it. Staples for Provorov. Albrecht back for Provorov to Staples. Staples the slapper. Albrecht. <laughs> Staples gets it once again. And Tucker but poked by Albrecht. And Van Ryan. Oh! Oh, God. It almost had that one off the, uh, the, the thrown out puck by Van Ryan. And done. We'll take that. Oh, empty net. Hansik. Hansik. This is your chance. This is your chance. Hensick! Yay! Alvin Hensick with his first preseason goal in the NHL. Very nicely done. Alvin Hensick. The third Hensick <laughs> to appear on this channel in GM mode. First Reed Hensick with Vancouver, also number 90. Then Trevor Hensick with Halifax, once again, number 90. And now Alvin Hensick. Has scored a preseason goal in the NHL. That might be all he gets, unfortunately, but still feels real good to have a, another Hansik in the lineup. So, Grodstrom. Pass. Missed his target. And Provorov will chop that out and try to get it to point. Point almost got there. 10 seconds remaining. What can the Wolves do here? Guryanov. Back to the point for Staples. Two seconds remaining. Staples on that. Oh my goodness, what a blast. And that'll be the end of the game. 5-2 is the final score in favor of Wolfsburg Wolves. Alvin Hensick with his first goal. Of course, it was an empty netter. And there he is, the man of the hour, number 90. And uh, yeah, there you go. Solid game from your Wolfsburg Wolves. Let's get back to the menu. Alright, so we're back in the menu and we're going to get into the calendar here. We're going to sim the rest of the preseason because I want Alvin Hensick to get as many games as possible in a Wolfsburg uniform. Of course, they're not going to be in the regular season, but we're going to see what happens here in the preseason as, once again, got to keep the Hensick name uh, running as long as possible with uh, with this GM mode. And obviously, didn't happen until year number 10 of the preseason and he's not going to be on the, uh, on the regular season roster, but... We can at least enjoy him here in the preseason. So we'll see what he can do. So let's take a look at the preseason stats. I'm mainly interested in Albrecht and and Alvin Hensick. We, we already know about all these guys. Homer, Weiss, Mayer, Jones, Provart. We know all these guys are going to score. Albrecht with six points on the fourth line. On, only on the fourth line. Well, he's on the penalty kill too, but he's not going to get any goals. That Well, actually, my mistake, he did. <laughs> he, he got a shorthanded goal. In the preseason, so that's that's very good. And Alvin Hansick with three goals, so pretty solid showing from Alvin Hansick and Matthias Allrecht. We'll be sending Hansick back down to the minors, unfortunately. As much as it kills me as a Hansick fan, <laughs> at least in terms of you know the computer generated players, but uh, yeah, pretty solid showing again. But uh, obviously, as a champion team, we do need our best roster on the ice at all times, and unfortunately. Alvin Hansick is not part of that best roster. So we're going to send him back down to the AHL for a little bit of seasoning. He did great. And he's apparently a fourth liner <laughs> as of right now. But he's only a 75. He's a sniper. I want him to get goals down there in the AHL so he can build up his confidence for the future. Obviously, uh, anything past this that we happen to do uh, isn't going to count towards the record books. But uh, if, if we do do any simulating past year number 10... I definitely want to gro <laughs> groom Alvin Hensick into an NHL player. So, I believe this is our roster going forward. Now, the thing that concerns me the most is Demko and Rodine. I'm not sure... <sighs> since we have the cap space to keep both of them, obviously, for throughout this year, but what do we do about them? Because they're both elite goaltenders, and I, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of unfair to Thatcher Demko now that we have... Rodine, pretty much the starting goaltender at this point, and it looks like he's just kind of on the way out, unfortunately. It, it's not the way that I wanted that to be, but it's, you know, it's just kind of the way things are working right now. I'm not sure where I'm going to take it to in this video. I know that we're not going to do the full season. At most, we'll go up to the trade deadline, because I really want to hear what you guys have to say about having... Thatcher Demko be in the lineup because I know there's other teams who could definitely use him and having him and, and Rodine don't get me wrong is beautiful 
but uh, at the same time, both of them are capable elite goaltenders at this point in their careers, like especially Rodine, who's on the way up, 24 years of age. Rodine's, or, uh, Demko <laughs> is 31. He's probably looking to win a Stanley Cup, and obviously he, he might be able to do that on this team. I mean, we're, we've been to the Western Conference Finals four times in a row, but we haven't gotten it done yet. So what do we do in terms of our goaltending situation? We'll have to figure that out as the season goes on. And uh, let me just make sure all of our lines are set here. And they should be because I just replaced uh, Albrecht and Hensick with Trocek and Stahlberg and replaced them everywhere. So that should have just automatically put Trocek and Stahlberg back where they were. So yeah, well, I, I believe that is it in terms of lines. For right now, we are going to go with a 2-2 two to two loss ratio with Rodine and Demko. But once again, I'm not sure what to think about this goaltending situation. And once again, you guys let me know in the comments what we should do about that. Whether we should keep them both as insurance for the playoffs or if we should just let one of them go to a different team and be a starter there, you know. So, assign scout. Uh, we should be fine for scouts. I mean, we're in year number 10 anyway, so it's not like it's a dire need at the moment. So, we will simulate this first game against the Arizona Coyotes and see what they're all about. First period, goal by Yorgaho Air Punk Tet. Let's go. Second period, two goals by Arizona Galchandiak and Smith. Third period, and that will be a goal by LeBanc, and that is a first loss of the season. Only goal by Yorgaho, the captain. So, uh, I mean, good start for him, but not really for the team. So as we go on to Vegas here, but remember, we are doing a 2-2 loss ratio. So if Rodine loses this one, we're going to go with Demko, and this will be a 3-1 win. That's a 2-1 loss. Yeah, we're going to, I mean, as much as it's it's not really his fault that he's losing these games because it's just a lack of offense, really. One goal, four, one goal, four, uh, three goals here, four, that's fine. But eh, the two games that we lost so far, no offensive support whatsoever. So, he, yeah, he's doing all right. I'll give him one more game. But again, just because the, the offensive support has been absolutely nowhere. So, Washington, let's see what we have here. Let's be a 5-3 win. Okay. There's the offense. So when we, when we win, we're getting the offense. But when we lose, we're not. Vancouver, 4-3 loss. All right. So there was a game where we actually did get the offense. But Rodine didn't shut the door as much as I would have liked him to. So we are going to get Thatcher Demko in there for the uh, next stretch of games. So Demko with two unfortunate losses. 1-4-1 one one, and then 1-3-1. I'm going to do the same thing for him as I did with Rodine. I'm going to give him one more game just because the offense has literally been nowhere. He had a rough game against St. Louis. Didn't have the greatest game against Nashville, but I want to see if he can rebound against Detroit. So we are 2-5 and five to start the season. That is not good. Uh, if we if this, if this it continues like this, I mean, we might have to stop it well before the trade deadline. All right, there you go. Solid shutout victory. He responded well. We will go to the game against Colorado and see what happens there. We have a 5-2 win. Much better. Edmonton, a 5-2 win as well. Okay, so good news is that Demko is looks to be heating up here, as does our offense. I mean, 10 goals in the last two games there, and another three there. So I'll keep Demko playing, I guess, for another few games. Demko's been real solid. I mean, two shutout victories in a back-to-back <laughs> against Montreal and then against Tampa and then a 5-2 win against Boston. He's been real solid and he's making it real tough to want to put Rodine in there. See, here's where I'm conflicted. Rodine had a solid, and I mean solid, playoff outing as we all saw. Obviously, no one really had a great outing in uh, versus San Jose, but he's making it hard. He's really making it hard to get Rodine in there. And obviously, there's a loss there against Philly. So I think we'll get Rodine in here. <laughs> There's a 7-3 win against Pittsburgh, but we, we got to get Rodine some time. 
because he's again both of these guys are solid so solid and we have the cap space to keep them it's just a matter of you know uh, getting them both adequate playing time is the uh is the question here so we'll get Rodin a few games as well we'll give him this next stretch from uh, Columbus to Anaheim and we'll see what he could do in this next week yeah they're not making this easy they are not making this easy for me <laughs> a 4-2 win there he only lets up two goals a 2-0 loss there it doesn't get any offensive support only lets in two goals only lets in two goals here 5-2 win only lets in two goals here five or uh, six two went against the anaheim ducks so we are four uh 14 seven and oh we'll take it up to the end of the month i suppose after ottawa and uh, man they're just we have two incredible goaltenders the coach part of me says to keep both of them but then again if i was one of either demko or rodin you know i wouldn't exactly be happy with <laughs> splitting got splitting games with another elite goaltender you know this is like a Luongo Schneider situation of of 2011 or 2012 or whatever it was for the Vancouver Canucks and Rodin's been solid he has been so as we take a look at games played I mean I mean it's so close it is so close goals against average I see that as more of a team stat that's not really a goaltending stat as much as it is just the whole team and obviously Demko has the three shutouts but it's so close it is incredibly close. And Rodin, keep in mind, has had to make more saves. So, <laughs> I mean, not a, you know, there, there's not a huge difference, but he's faced, he's clearly faced more shots in one less game than Demko has. So I, I don't know if, I'm not sure what to make of that, but man, it, they're just, neither of these guys are making it easy to, to have a decision between these two. So we're going to check out the player stats now. Yorgaho, the captain, with 22 points. Braden Point, after a lackluster playoffs, starting out the season on the third line and has 20 points so far. So he's been good. He's been good. I'll give it to him. Todd Mayer with 18 points. Homer with 17. Niederberger with 17 as well. Weiss with 17. We're stacked now, boys. Zanetti with 12, Miller with 11, Gurianov with 11, Jones with 10, Kulishov with 10, uh, Stahlberg on the fourth line with 8 points, Goddard with 7, uh, Lindholm with 6, Trocek with 6, Wiz Bohinski, Bohinski, there he is, speaking of which, with 5, Brovrov with 4, Staples with 1, Kondratek hasn't played, Albrecht hasn't played, so not an, <laughs> a single injury yet, I'm glad for that, but uh, well, I guess we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the season, Shots, Aho, and Homer with the most 75 72 nothing new there face-offs where are we sitting so aho 56 .55, 54 for weiss and a 52 for trocek so we have a pretty solid group of face-off taking uh, centers and a, a solid group of centers in general for that matter uh, hits homer with 49 aho 47 weiss 42 34 for jones and Provorov. 33 for Miller, 32 for Lindholm, 31 for Zanetti, 29 for Guryanov, 28 for Stahlberg, 23 for Kuleshov in as many games. So he's so showing his physical side this year. Niederberger with 22, Mayer with 14, Goddard with 11, Staples with 10, Point with 10, Trocek with 7. Now remember, he's on the fourth line this year, so he's obviously going to be, his, his numbers are going to be down there compared to where they used to be. And Tim Bohensky, we know he doesn't hit one hit so far. Takeaways to giveaways. So Cam Weiss is actually up there. We knew he was a great takeaway to giveaway ratio guy. But he's currently above Todd Mayer, the takeaway master. So he's a Todd, Todd Mayer, 31 to 25. Weiss, 33 to 14 at the moment. Trocek, 13 13. Miller, 13 12. 12 to 10 for Gurianov. 10 to 9 for Point. 10 to 12 for Ajo. 10 to 3 for Goddard. So Goddard's pretty good as well with the takeaways to give away so far. Uh, 10 to 8 for Stahlberg. 9 to 11 for Zanetti. 9 to 9 for Niederberger. 8 to 17 for Homer. That's a, bit, a little rough for him, but he's getting some offense there, so I can't really complain too much. Staples with the 7 to 13. That's good for him. 7 to 19 for Bohinski. Uh, Jones, 6 to 25. That's unusual for him. Uh, Lindholm, 5 to 19. 
4 to 15 for Provorov, 3 to 25 for Kuleshov. So that's a bit rough as well. Any fights so far this season? I would imagine. Yeah, Stahlberg. <laughs> then Miller and Weiss with the fight as well. And now, obviously, we already checked goaltenders. I mean, it's just so close. I mean, how can you decide? <laughs> obviously, if you're looking long term, you take the younger guy. But uh, Demko, he's got just as much. He's he's got as much experience as anybody, and he's tearing it up too. Both of these guys are just tearing it up, and uh, <laughs> they're not making it easy. Oh man. I mean, then again, Rodin did kind of collapse in the later part of last season. So I guess there's that to take into account. But, man, it's... With the way Rodin played in the playoffs last season, he more than made up for it, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, we got a pair of tremendous goaltenders right here. And I'm glad we do, for sure. But they... uh they both want that starting job, the permanent starting job. Team stats, goals for per game. We are second in our division. Goals against per game, 2.09. Thank you, Demko. Thank you, Rodin. Oh, my goodness. Power play, we're actually kind of up there, 23.5. And penalty kill, 87.9. By far the best in our division. I mean, we're by far the best team in our division, it appears has uh, <laughs> the Minnesota Wild are the next best team with 28 points, so they're close to us. So is Dallas and Nashville. So the Central Division has gotten better as the years have gone on, but <laughs> for the most part in this GMO, the Central Division has just been terrible. <laughs> I mean, it really has. It's only us in Minnesota, pretty much, that have been consistent threats in the Central Division. So we're going to go another few games here with Rodin and Nett. Because he's just been winning nonstop, basically. Besides that one loss that he had. But that was completely not his fault. 2 nothing loss. So, we're going to go up to Florida with Rodin and see what we can do. So, I decided to stop it a little early here. Rodin did let in quite a few goals there. He let in 4, and then 4, and then 3. So, we're going to get Demko back in there. How much did that hurt his number? Yeah, that hurt it quite a bit. So, we're going to get Demko back in. And we're going to hope that Demko can sort of take the reins here. I mean, obviously, it's a goaltender's duel here. So, <laughs> you know what? We're going to we have to ride the best goaltender. No! <laughs> Berlin player Alvin Hensick been injured with a broken nose until December 23rd. The legend goes down. <laughs> All right, so we're going to leave Thatcher Demko in there as he's kind of been on a roll. 3-1, 2-2, 2-1 loss, not his fault, 4-2 win. So we're really going to get him in there for three more games against LA, Arizona, and Vegas. Yay, Hensick is back. Let's go. Okay, so there seems to be a bit of a trend here with, not only with Rodin, but with Demko too. Both of our goaltenders, they have a solid stretch, and then they have a not-so-solid stretch. Uh, Demko has let in, let's see, that's five... 9, 11, and then 14 because the extra, you know, score on the shootout doesn't count as a goal. So, in 14 games, that's, or uh, in four games, that's 14 goals. And then the four games before that, that was, let's see, how many? Seven. So, yeah, definitely not a good stretch there for Thatcher Demko. We're going to get Rodine back in there. It seems like it's just kind of a back and forth kind of tilt right now between these two. <laughs> it's, there's no one really finding any consistency. They're both going on hot and cold streaks. I mean, it's just so close. It's so close, man. That's rough. Wolfsburg player Seth Jones injured with an injured neck until January 10th. <laughs> That's a big one. So I'm going to see how Kondratek does with Kuleshov. As I don't want to take Provorov off the second, and I don't want to take Lindholm off the third pair. So we're going to see what a good defenseman paired with an okay defenseman does for uh, each pair. Obviously, Bohinski's kind of slowed down offensively this, this season. Only 12 points so far. Hopefully, he can get it going. He's on pace for about a 25-point season, I would say. And anything else that we need to do? Country Tech on the power play. Kuleshov, Bohinski, Lindholm. Uh, could put Staples there. 
Then again, he hasn't exactly been dynamite offensively either. Guess we'll put a forward on the point. Yeah, that's going to have to be it. Or we could get Provrov there. But Provrov's more of a defensive guy. Yeah, he only has five points this year. All right, so we're getting Aaron Zanetti on the power play. He, he has not been on the power play this year. Only 13 points so far. That's unfortunate. A little bit of a slow start on the second line. But he's obviously not on the power play, so... That might be contributing to it, so we'll see what he can do in uh, in place of Seth Jones on the power play, and hopefully he can get going that way. Five on five as well. Uh, was that, he on the penalty kill? Yeah, he was. Counter attack. Yeah, I'll leave counter attack there for now. He's good on the penalty kill, I would say. Uh, and actually, actually, is Lindholm? Yeah, Lindholm's on the penalty kill. Who are my other options? Staples and Bohinski. Yeah, I'll leave Country Tech there. Now, I do not want Country Tech on the three on three. So, uh, Mayor, Aho, Lindholm, and Kulishov. I don't want three lefties together. So, it's not going to be Kulishov or Lindholm. It can't be Provorov either. Uh, Bohinski. Yeah, he's he's a little bit more built for the three on three than uh, Country Tech is, I would say. Uh, Demko and Rodin. Yep. All right. Ah, uh, so we're, the inconsistencies with goaltending continues as Cali Rodin with a solid performance against the Capitals and the Canucks. 2 nothing win, then a 2-1 win, then a 5-3 win against the Blues, so not bad there. Then a 4-3 shootout lo loss, a 4-2 loss, 5-2 loss. I mean, it's just, we seem to... <sighs> I, I'm not liking the pattern that's going on here. I'm not sure what it is, but I mean, both of these guys, for some reason, they can't find that, uh, that, you know, consistency that they need to go more than for more than like five games or so. So we're going to see what Demko could do here over the next week. And I'm hoping he's the, he's going to be able to find some consistency here because we haven't really found it yet, as Seth Jones is back, so that's good. But still, got to figure out that goaltending. So how, how's Counter Tech done? One assist, plus two in two games. Not too bad. Uh, one hit, three giveaways. Has Belhansky done? Minus three. Uh, Staples, plus six, or uh, plus 12, actually. I'm going to take Bohinski out for right now. I think what's he done on the power play so far is four power play po points. Do I want to take that off the power play? The power play has been rolling though, hasn't it? At last checked anyway, it was. So hold on. I'm going to check the team stats. I'm going to see where the power play is currently sitting because that would kind of affect my decision as to whether we're playing Hundred attack or Bohinski. So power play is currently sitting at twenty four point three. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to take Bohinski out. We gotta leave him in there for the power play, even if only for the power play. So we're taking Hundred Tech out and Bo and uh, Jones back in because you know obviously Jones is a little too good to not put back in there. We are just not finding any kind of goaltending consistency here. Or, or defensive consistency, whatever it may be. 4-1 win against Edmonton. 2-1 win against Minnesota. Two solid goes there for Demko. But then a 5-4 win. So we let in four. A 4-2 loss against Tampa. And then a 2-1 win. And then a 5-1 loss against Chicago. Who are not exactly in a great position right now. So I'm not sure what to make of it. It might be that we have two number one goaltenders. And that we have to get rid of one. Which would be unfortunate, but that might honestly be the case. Because <laughs> if you think about real life, you know, the mental effect that has on you. <sighs> Demko, 924. Yeah, I mean, they're both they're both incredibly close in terms of the amount of... <laughs> just the amount of su success that they've had. And neither of them have been consistent. So I'm thinking that might be what it is. I'm going to go one more stretch here. I think we call it Rodin. Uh, I mean, of course, we're not in a bad position. We're 26, tw or uh, we're 27, 14, and 5. But, you know, it's uh, it's frustrating to see 
this kind of inconsistency. You know, I, they have two solid outings and then they have three not great ones. Like, see, here it is again. One nothing win against Philly. And let's see, against Pittsburgh, two nothing or two one win. Now, I guarantee if the pattern continues, we are going to see a couple of big losses here against Columbus, Winnipeg, or the Islanders. One of those, at least one of those, is going to be a bad loss if everything has gone the way it has so far continues. Uh, Peyton Knight's been injured, unfortunately. Replaced player, that's a bad one. Elite goaltender. Uh, two one loss. Uh, all right, so solid performance from Rodine there. Winnipeg, a 4-1 win. Okay, Cali Rodine starting to... I'm not going to jinx it, but he's... Um, that's four games in a row, five games in a row now, where he's had an outstanding performance. So we'll go two more games here with Rodine. We'll see what happens. Anaheim, a 2-1 win. Ooh. So, Cali Rodine. Hmm. Up until that game against the Rangers really asserted why he's the number one goaltender. And even that game against the Rangers, you know, you're going to have the occasional off game, but it's just the the lack of consistency that we've had this year with goaltending that is, is really putting every game under the microscope. But he's now up to a 933 save percentage. She's And he's had to make a hundred more saves too. <laughs> in, uh, in only one more game played than... Demko. Oh my goodness. They both have three shutouts too. That's tough. That's extreme. <laughs> Cali Rodine, man. He is not making it easy. If there's something that we're doing this trade deadline, it might only be that we would trade Demko or, or Rodine, whichever one, but I, it's not looking like it's going to be Rodine at this point. If we're trading anybody, it, it would probably be Demko. See, here's the thing. I'm, I'll say it again, I'm so conflicted on whether I want to have two solid, extremely good goaltenders going into the year 10 playoffs, which makes a lot of sense for the team, but I'm also not sure if I would want to do that to Thatcher Demko or to Cali Rodin, you know, but the way it's going right now, Cali Rodin is playing like an absolute monster. Cali Rodin, man. He is playing out of his mind. 2-1 loss, not his fault. 3-2 shootout win. 5-2 win against the Devils. We are now 34-16-6. and six, Top of the division. Ajo leads in scoring. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really unusual about that. But as we go to check goaltenders, what's his, Rodin's stats look like? Still a 933. 883 saves. And only four more games played in Demko. Only has 706. Rodine has had to make nearly 200 more saves in only four more games played. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's impressive. That's incredible. We got to keep riding Rodine here, boys. As much as I want to give Demko some games, Rodine is just killing it right now. And I hope he stays consistent. Please stay consistent. Seth Jones again. Oh. A fractured jaw until March 10th this time. Oh my goodness. So we're going to get Country Tech back in there. And it's, it's not too long of an injury. I think it's only two weeks or so. Three weeks. And it's still a major injury. Anytime any of our defense, any of our major defensemen goes down, that's a huge loss. I mean, obviously we have the depth to back it up. And so obviously we're still a good team. It's not the worst injury in the world. But it's still, you know, <laughs> I prefer to have Jones than not. Callie Rodine has actually been an animal. Other than these two games right here against Calgary and then against Arizona, we won that game against Arizona 6-4, and then we lost against Calgary 4-2. Fair. But every other game, 3-1 win. 3-1 win. 3-2 shootout loss. Not his fault. 5-2 win. 3-1 win. Um... It's kind of clear who's been the more consistent goaltender at this point, at, at least at this point in the season. It's got to be Kyle Rodin taking us into the playoffs because he has been phenomenal so far. He's held that 933 save percentage that we saw him at last. He hasn't added any shutouts since, but 
man, he has just been solid as a rock in this last stretch. And Demko has not played a single minute since he was last in there. So, uh, again, I hate to do that to Demko. But at the same time, we're in year number 10. I want two solid goaltenders that I can trust going into the playoffs. So, you guys let me know. But I I really... Again, the the GM part of me, the the <laughs> uh, wanting to win part of me says keep both of them. If we're trading anybody, it's going to be Demko because at this point, Cali Rodine has proven that he is a absolute stud of a goaltender. Uh, nine thirty three save percentage so far over thirty seven games, and then he had a nine twenty three last year in the playoffs. He proved he's not a prop, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, again, if it's anybody, then it's Dumco. If not, then nobody's getting traded. Because both of these guys are solid. And here's the thing, again, we can afford to keep both of them. We can afford it. It's just a matter of whether we want to give Demko a different team so that he could be the backup, so that he could be the main goaltender there instead of splitting games with Rodine. But at this point... Rodin has played so many and, and he's played so well that I'm not sure how many more games Demko's going to get <laughs> in this regular season, you know? So I think I'm going to leave it off here in terms of the simulation. We'll check out the points one more time, but you guys got to let me know here. Yorgaho with 52 points, 50 for Homer, 49 for Mayer, 43 for point, Weiss with 38, Niederberger with 35, 26 for Kuleshov and Gurianov. Jones with 25, Bohansky 24, Trocek 23, Stahlberg 22, Miller 20, Zanetti with 18, only, only 18 for Zanetti, really? Huh. Unusual for Aaron Zanetti. I mean, at least he's being physical, so he's not a complete empty presence out there. I guess he's getting a lot less ice time right now than he was before, but geez. Uh, Goddard with 18. Lindholm with 17, Provorov with 10, Staples with 7, Contratec with 3 in 5 games, and Albrecht has not played. So we got pretty lucky. Other than Jones, we've gotten pretty lucky with the injuries this year. Faceoffs, uh, Aho 55, Weiss 54, point 54, and Trocek's below a 50 now. He's at a 49, not too bad. Uh, hits, Homer, Aho, Weiss, all over 100. Provorov's close, and everyone else... Yeah, I mean, we know these guys down here aren't going to hit. Let's see. Takeaways to giveaways. So, Todd Mayer <laughs> has reclaimed the takeaway lead with 106 to 52. Oh, my goodness. The takeaway master continues <laughs> to live up to his name. And Cam Weiss, 89 to 44. Certainly doesn't hurt either. Everybody else. Yeah, my voice is killing me at this point. So... I think you guys have seen what you need to see. Fights. I mean, there's Stahlberg with four, Weiss with two, Miller with one. Goaltenders, again, Rodin has been incredible. Absolutely incredible. So I'll leave you guys off there. And let me know what we should do. Should we keep Rodin and Demko going into the playoffs? Let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one when we finish off the year 10 regular season simulation. Oh my goodness, it's almost over.